All right, everybody. You're going to join and get started here. It is now 7 o'clock. Let me go ahead and uh, get everything going. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -da -da. Oh, camera. All right. How's everybody doing? Hopefully, everybody is. Um, I guess some people will be logging on here soon. People will just people logging on. I'm going to try to get through this as quickly as possible tonight because I got a lot to do. A lot. <laughs> um, we got a whole lot to do tonight. So we're going to try to get through this as quickly as possible. Waiting for some people to log on here. Remember, when you come on, mute your mics. Uh, mute your mics when you come on. When you first come on, uh, mute your mics. So let me go ahead and get some things situated so we can get started. We're already live on, on, on YouTube. Uh, where, 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 where else do I need to be? Um, oh yeah, I need to do my, um, the rbbslc.com, get that up and going. All right, CFR, compliance tonight, got that going. Okay. We're live, got that going. Okay, then we're about ready. Make sure I got some people into my. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. We should have some more people logging on here pretty soon. Um, we're not gonna wait for them because I got I'm on, I'm on a time restraint. I gotta keep this down to an hour, no more than an hour tonight because I've got a lot of stuff I gotta do with our consulting firm. We got picking up some more clients. I gotta. Um, we picked up another uh, trademark um, user today, uh, another owner of the RBBS Logistics Learning Center. She got her uh, RBBS Logistics Learning Center uh, today, Miss uh, Rosa. And so I've got to uh, duplicate her sites and get her up and going so she can start promoting her own RBBS Logistics Learning Centers, just like I do mine and Miss Jen Williams does hers and the other people do theirs. So we're, we're moving right along, moving right along. So tonight is uh, dispatch training. We are at dispatch series number one, the very first part. That's where we're at tonight. How to dispatch um, from home series. And we're back at the beginning. We have seven steps to dispatching. We, last week, we covered the seventh step, which was invoicing, how to get paid, and how to invoice your carriers. So now we're back at step number one, compliance and tools. And compliance and the type of um, um, systems Computer system, what type of computer you're going to need, what are you going to need to um, uh, be successful at dispatching, and what are some of the attributes of a successful dispatcher. So that's what we're going over tonight. What makes dispatching legal? Is dispatching legal? Um, and all that type of stuff. What is the uh, the statute uh, concerning dispatching? We're going to break that statute down and we're going to explain it to everyone. The difference between a dispatcher and a freight broker and what a dispatcher can and can't do um, versus what a freight broker um can do. So that's where we're at tonight. All right, let me go ahead and start my recording and then we can get started. Do, 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 do. Record. All right, good evening, everybody. This is Calvin Butler with the RBBS Logistics Learning Centers and the National Dispatchers Network. Tonight is How to Dispatch Training Series. And tonight we're back at step number one in the seven part series. There are seven steps to. Um, Actually, there's six steps, but the first part is compliant, knowing the legality of dispatches, and that's where we are tonight in part one. So we're starting over fresh with our course, and tonight is, is our how-to dispatch series starts off with the first part, which is compliance. We're going to go over compliance. What makes a dispatcher yeah. legal? Um, what's the difference between a dispatcher and a freight broker? What can a dispatcher do and what can't? A dispatcher do. We're also going to go over, we're going to break down how the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration classifies dispatchers as bona fide agents. And we're going to break down that statute, 49 CFR, 49 um, CFR 170, I think it's 173, 174, somewhere around there. But we're going to break that statute down and explain it to you. And we're going to talk about what do you need to be a successful dispatcher? What type of computers um, do you need? Um, what type of systems? Um, you're gonna need um, what makes uh, what 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 attributes must a person possess 
to be a successful dispatcher, what are some of the uh, the repetitive things that you've got to learn how to do to become a dispatcher? So we're going to break that down tonight, but we're going to do it all here within one hour because I am on time restraints tonight. I've got so much stuff to do tonight, so much stuff to do. We've got a new owner of the RBBS of this United Center paid their trademark uh, early this morning, Miss Rosa. So we got I got to get her um, up and going, get her sights done. Um, tonight, and, and and so she can go ahead and start promoting her RVBS News United Centers. Um, we picked up another client for the RVBS LLC um, corporate consultant, where we work with young and up and coming and startup brokers firms and help them get to that two point five million to five million dollars within the first two years. And on in the fifth year, we um, help them to get to anywhere between twenty million and forty million in yearly revenue by their fifth and sixth year, and by their 10th year, we uh, help them to go ahead and scale their business to a point where they're doing a half a billion dollars a year to a billion dollars or more in yearly revenue. That's right. That's a real thing. And then that's what we're doing. Uh, so that's what we're doing with the RBBS, logist, the RBBS LLC corporate consulting. We are gonna be hiring more consultants. Uh, um, I'm gonna have a um, training session for um, our for new consultants to give you some type of orientation about what Darren and I do on that consulting side, doing the corporate um, consulting. And the and and look, the income is good. And we are being inundated with, woo, with brokers firms seeking our help. So we're getting we're getting so many brokers firms calling us up and wanting to get our help. We have to put some of them on hold. We can't just grab them all right now because we don't have the staff to um, take care of, um, of um, you know, guiding them and consulting them and working with them because the contracts that we do with these books from is, is either a two-year contract or a 10-year contract. So um, serious stuff, though. A lot of money. Good money. All right. Let's get started. Let's check out and see what's going on on YouTube. We've already went live on YouTube. We saw sharing my screen. And see what's going on on YouTube tonight. Uh, we got Dwayne Fetcher on YouTube. He says, hello. And we say hello back. Dwayne, how you doing? Nice for you to, he's coming from, um, looks like Virginia. Hello from, from, from Virginia. We have seven watching uh, tonight on the How To Dispatch series, which is compliance. We have eight watching now. We have two check-ins. Mr. James Sears has checked in. Greetings, bro. Greetings to you, Mr. Sears. All right. So let's go ahead and get started with our how-to dispatch series. As you all know, we are always, always sponsored by the RBBS Logistics Learning Center, our freight vocational school, our freight brokers and dispatch vocational school with guaranteed career placement from bonded logistics brokers firms and state licensed accredited dispatch firms after successful course completion. So there you have it. That's a, this is a look at our school campus and everything, our um, vocational school. You can register for your career training, and you can um, get money for your um, tuition. The tuition is $7,500. Very soon, we will be government-sponsored, which means we have different government uh, agencies that we get you qualified through where they will pay to send you to our vocational school, and they will also pay, to, pay for you to take our online training. Our online training platform is co-sponsored by the National Dispatching Network Training and the Convenience of Your Own. Our online platform will train you to earn 100 k plus from home, dispatching freight, and provide the online network tools, resources, and training to ensure your success. As you all know, our students and members get all these great goodies. Access to more than 100 low books. Access to more than $140,000 of operational training video. Access to more than 19 million direct shipping. Access to every registered owner operating in the United States. Access to our live training. Access to our logistics library that has every word, phrase, and term ever used in trucking. And, of course, access to our network of more than 2,967 industry professionals. You all come together on our two private um, social media sites, one on Facebook and one on Clubhouse. We all get to talk to each other, help each other to understand the industry, help each other to find and book freight. You're there to network with each other. And, of course, our most popular enrollment is still just $349.95 plus tax on your enrollment and a monthly subscription fee of $39.95 per month plus tax 
which comes which takes place 30 days after you're finished uh, paying for your enrollment. We now accept after pay. Pay over six weeks, make the first payment up front, and the rest over time. Always interest free when you pay it in four. Look for the after pay option at checkout. Several enrollment options available to view the online options. Click the online enrollment, that little button right there. Just go ahead on and click it, or you come down here and kind of take a look at three of our most popular um, enrollments and choose the one that's right for you and click the get started today. Enroll now, and that'll take you over. You can go ahead and take care of that either through after pay or by your debit and credit card, and then we'll see you in training. All right. Whew. That was a lot. <laughs> All right. Let's get over here and let's start our training now. All right, tonight we are we are dealing with compliance. Okay. I know you all are always hearing people say, well, you know, dispatchers, they're not legal. Uh, 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 you know, dispatchers can't dispatch rate for more than they can't contract with more than one carrier. Uh, dispatchers, they're acting like brokers and uh, you know, they just they're just not legal. There's no such thing as a legal dispatcher. Well, we're going to investigate that tonight because we're going to look at the code of federal regulation as it relates to DOT and the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. Now, we all know that statutes, legal statutes, that's the law. That's <laughs> the law of the land. Every, every state, every you know, county, every municipality, every parish, has statutes, and statutes are, are laws that are enforced by a legal system and a law enforcement agency. But guess what? DOT is a law enforcement agency. They just handle stuff when it deals with the Department of Transportation. But make no mistake about it, they are a law enforcement agent, and their legal entity is the Federal Motor, the Federal Motor Carriers Safety Administration. So with that being said, here is the statute as it is set forth by DOT and the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Association. This is 49, statute 49 CFR 371.2. And this statute governs brokers and dispatchers and tells you why they're legal and what they need to be to be legal and how they need to operate. Okay. Let's read the statute and let's break it down. CFR um, content, 371.2 definition. Broker means a person who, for compensation, arranges or offers to arrange the transportation of property by an authorized motor carrier. Motor carriers or persons who are, or, or persons who are employees or bona fide agents, y'all remember that? Y'all remember that phrase right there? Bona fide agents of carriers are not brokers within the meaning of this section when they arrange or offer to arrange the transportation of shipments which they are authorized to transport and which they can, which they have accepted <coughs> and legally bond, bond, bound themselves to transport. Now, this area right here says that brokers are persons, means a person who for compensation arranges and offers to arrange the transportation of property by an authorized motor carrier. It says right here, motor carriers or, not are, but are persons who are employees or bona fide agents. Now, whenever you see the word or, that means that the, that person is different from the other person that they were referring to. So employees are not motor carriers. Therefore, bona fide agents are not employees. Okay? But, and it says that neither of these are not brokers within the meaning of this section. When they arrange or offer to arrange the transportation of shipments, which they are authorized to transport. So that tells you that, look, motor carriers, the person who is their employees or bona fide agents, they're all authorized 
to arrange transport. Now, are they brokers? No, because it says right here, they're not brokers as it pertains to this section. But however, in section B, you see how here what says bona fide agents. Let's look at that. Now, that, my friend, are bona fide agents are dispatchers. Bona fide agents are dispatchers, okay? When they operate under this legal statute. Bona fide agents are, not or, they are persons who are part of the normal organization of a motor carrier and perform duties under the carrier's directions persuading to a pre-existing agreement. Now, what is that pre-existing agreement? That is a dispatch agreement. Now, if, a, if you were an employee of a carrier, you would not need a pre-existing agreement. Why? Because you're an employee. But bona fide agents, otherwise, dispatchers are not employees of the carrier. They are bona fide agents. In other words, they are independent contractors. Bona fide agents and independent contractors can do can work for more than one client, but they must have a pre-existing agreement which provides for a continuing relationship. That's your dispatch agreement. So that puts, shuts down one big myth that all these people are saying, well, dispatchers can't work for more than one carrier. They can't, they can't work for more than one, but they don't work for the carrier. They are being, they are contracted. They're contracted. They're contracted to work for the carrier. They're not employees of the carrier. Now, if they were employed, if they were employees, then yes, obviously they can only work for that one employee. But because they are not employees and they are basically independent contractors, okay, this tells you right here. They are part of the normal organization of a motor carrier and perform duties under the carrier's direction, persuading to a pre-existing agreement which provides for a continuing relationship, precluding the exercise of discretion on the part of the agent. Now get this, it goes in and it reaffirms that they are not an employee, but it reaffirms that they are an agent in allocating traffic between the carrier and others. Look, people, this couldn't be more plain if they walked up and hit you upside the head with it and say, learn this stuff, man. <laughs> this is, I mean, it's as plain as daylight. <clears throat> it also puts, the, puts forth the notion that kills another assertion that dispatches are not legal by saying right here, um, for a continued relationship. One of the big, you know, things that people use when they're saying dispatches are not legal, well, that they can't do a dispatch agreement for that carrier and then just have that one dispatch agreement. You know, that that's, that's, that's only one dispatch. Every, every time they go out and find freight for a carrier, they got to do another agreement. What? No, it says right here for a continuing relationship, okay? Persuading to a pre-existing agreement which provides for a continuing relationship. So that means that one dispatch agreement, you get that one dispatch agreement signed and completed, then they can dispatch for that carrier as many times and as long as they want to until either party decides to what? In that relationship. I know y'all get tired of hearing people that tell you, if dispatch ain't legal, they got to do a dispatch agreement every time they book free. Well, that's not what the statute says. The statute says that once they get that agreement signed, they can continue to dispatch freight for that carrier for as long as that relationship is agreeable by the two of them. Okay? And because they are an agent and not an employee, that means they can contract with multiple carriers, as many as they can service. All right. 
Brokerage or brokerage service is the arranging of transportation or the physical movement of a motor vehicle or of property. It can be performed on behalf of a motor carrier. Whoa, that's a big one right there. It says it can be performed on behalf of a motor carrier. Consign or, or consign e. Non-broker service is all other services performed by a broker on behalf of the motor carrier consignee, consignor, or consignor. <coughs> all right. That should be the end of the story. End of story. Dispatching is legal. Dispatchers are bona fide agents. Bona fide agents and dispatchers can have a continued relationship with a carrier by the signing of one dispatch agreement. Dispatchers are not employees. They are independent contractors. Therefore, they can sign a contract with many different owner operators and carriers. Does anybody doubt the legality of dispatch? Anybody? Does anybody doubt the legality of dispatching at this point? Anybody? Okay. GGC, greatness. How you doing? Hello, Miss. Uh, hello, Cal. Yeah, GGC. I know you're a new student. I know you just enrolled. You're the one that got the two um, logins there. <laughs> I'm just playing with you. <coughs> I know it, it was an honest mistake, and I understand. But we, but, but, but you know, but it's all good. Uh, Nairis Smith Closet. Hello, Mr. Calvin Butler. I really enjoy your teaching, but I really enjoy teaching you. <laughs> I really do. All right. Go ahead and join our platform. Come on into the family. You know, we don't bite. <laughs> so just go ahead and join our platform. Go ahead and enroll and come on into the family so we can get you off to a great, great, great start. All right. Now, hopefully, everybody is clear on the legality of dispatching on that part of it. Mr. Damien Stevens, my business partner, is just checking in. Hey, Damien, how you doing? All right. Hopefully, by now, everybody understands that dispatching is legal under the statute, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, CF 49, CFR 371.2, the definition of brokers. Bon and bona fide agents. So there you have it. Dispatching is legal. So that's the end of that conversation. End of story. Anybody that says otherwise, they just don't know what they are talking about. All right. Now, now that we've covered that, let's go over to what it's going to take to dispatch freight. Okay. What are you going to need to dispatch freight? All right. One of the main things that you're going to need is you're going to need a computer, okay? But what type of computer do you need? First of all, let's go with what you can't use to dispatch freight. Let's see here. What you can't use to dispatch freight is smartphones, okay? Let's, let's, don't make the mistake and think that you can use a smartphone to dispatch freight. You can't. Don't even try it. Okay, don't. I don't care if it's an Apple. I don't care if it's a, you know, whatever it is. You cannot use a smartphone to dispatch freight. Okay? There's too, there's too much you got to do. There's too many things you got to see. You know, you don't want to be looking at the mobile app version of the low board. You want to be looking at the actual computer version, the OS, the OSE version or whatever it is. But you cannot, you cannot, and please don't ever try to dispatch freight with a cell phone, with the, with the, um, with a smartphone. I don't care if it opens up like this or if it opens up like that. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. Okay. What else can you not use to dispatch freight? Okay. Most tablets are not. They're not good for dispatching freight. Most tablets are not good for dispatching freight. Okay. I, now notice I say most tablets. Now, if you got something that operates like this right here, let's say like a Surface Pro, 
that can be transformed into a laptop or well, it has the same capabilities as a laptop, yes, that is plausible to use that to dispatch freight. But if you're going to get a good tablet that acts like a laptop, those are usually pretty expensive. Now, there are some out there, $599, $700, even some for $300 or so, whatever it's been. That's not that expensive. That's still pretty good, 64 gigabytes or something like that. That's pretty good. But to dispatch freight, what you are going to need is a good, at the very bare minimum, a good laptop, a good laptop. Some people say laptop, some people say laptop. What is the, what is the official uh, um, um, term, laptop or laptop? <laughs> but some people say laptop, some people say laptop, okay. Um, a good laptop, okay, uh, and you can get you know, you know a good laptop, and what you're looking for, really, when you're looking for a good laptop um, computer, you're looking for something that has at least, I would recommend, one terabyte. I would recommend one terabyte, okay? One terabyte and at least 16 gigs of RAM. One terabyte and at least 16, one terabyte and 16 gigs, gigs of RAM. Now, are those expensive? Uh, yes and no. You can, you can find some that are very expensive, but there are those that are not very expensive either. Okay, here's one for 389. Okay, you get them for 389. Here's one for 4. $189. Yes, they can range up into the 1700s and the 1400s and all that type of stuff, but you have some that you can find at very good prices. And there's nothing saying that you have to have a brand new one. You can go with what's called refurbished laptops in this line. And as you can see, if you're doing some shopping on those, you can get them at pretty good prices too. There's some as low as there's something that's like around 200 some odd dollars that we can find them here. There's one for 499. There's one for 329. Uh, you, you can find them if you search for them. You can find them at really, really good prices. Now, the place that you're going to go to get the best prices on them, you can get them online. There's one for 462. Um, if you really want some good prices, here's one for 281. Okay. There's one for 281. So if you're looking to find them, you can get them at good prices, $319, $199, okay? Um, now, what I, I don't recommend Chromebooks, okay? Uh, here's one from Alabama for 202 if you don't mind waiting for it. It's going to take a while to get here. It's got to come from China. Um, so you, you can find these at some good prices. Now, if you want to look for some good prices, just go and add the little thing called Walmart. You add that little Walmart thing there, watch what you get. You'll find something at 239 at Walmart. 199 at Walmart. 186 at Walmart. 250. The discount edition. What else we got here from Walmart? You got a lot of good little low prices. Oh, well, I didn't even finish going through that right there. 250, 223 at Walmart, 304 at Walmart. Look at this. There's one for, did that thing say 64? Look at that. $64 at Walmart. Come on now. That's a Chromebook. That's what I don't recommend. Obviously, Chromebooks are cheap. I know they're cheap, but I don't recommend them because Google Chrome does not play well with others. So if you've got, you know, most of the carriers out there, they're working on a Windows operating system or something like that. And if you come in there with a Google Chromebook and you're trying to send stuff back and forth, it's not really compatible. They don't play well with others. Okay. Google and Apple products yes. don't so, play well with others. Please mute your mics okay, if you're just coming in. If you're just coming in, mute your mics. Thank you so very much. All right. Google Chrome and Apple do not play well with others. They just don't. They don't. Okay. They just don't. There's a Dell for 209. There's a um there's an Apple MacBook for 219, like I said, but I don't really eh, I don't really deal with the Apple products when it comes to uh, computers and stuff. And there's a 269 one there. Uh, so as you can see, you can get them at very affordable prices. Very affordable prices. And something like this is great to start off with. 
until you start making money. Now, once you move into an area where you're making some decent money, what you want to do is you want to get this right here. Here's what you want to get once you get start making some decent money. You want to go into what's called an all in one. All right. You want to invest in an all in one. Okay. That's what I am on right now. Up here in my bedroom, I am on an all in one. Okay. The one that I have is similar to right now. The one that I'm on is similar to, oh, there it is. It is what do I have? I have the HP. I have the HP is similar to this one, is what I have right now. And it's the HP all in one. It's similar to this one right here. Okay, one terabyte. There's, there's that one terabyte. I love the one terabyte. It's got a lot of speed, fast. No, my, no, my video is not choppy. My voice is not choppy. You know, when I'm doing stuff, when I'm talking to carriers and brokers, and you know, and I have right now I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten browsers open. Just on that's just on Mumzella Firefox by itself. On my um on my um explore, I got another nine browsers open. And nothing is slowing down. It's still popping. Okay. Invest in your all-in-one when you um, start making some money. As you see, some of you can afford an all-in-one right now. You can get them pretty cheap. Here's one from, from Amazon, 419. Here's one from, uh, who is this from? Best Buy for 379. You know, so they're not that expensive. 350, 449, like the one that I have, um, this HP with the one terabyte, eight gigs. It is $419. You get the same one, almost like the same one that I have right here right now. Okay? Got a little webcam up top and everything. Okay? So invest in you in all in one because these are really neat because you can have several screens up or whatever case may be, or at least two or three screens up. You know, like you see here, the way it's done. And they are good for, you know, for sitting down and, you know, doing your work. You can get stuff done fast. You got a big, nice screen. You got good speakers with it. You don't need the other big box thing down there, your, your CPU. All of that is included in that one thing, okay? It comes with your, your keypad and your mouse, like I got right here. It comes with that. I got a wireless mouse. It comes with mine, and um, it's great. It is great for using to dispatch freight, okay? Now, the ultimate is like what I have down in my man cave in my main office. You're going to have what's called um, you're going to get you something called a wrap. Around or panoramic. Monitor. You're going to get something like this. This is what I have in my man cave. Okay. I've got um, this right here is what I have in the man cave. Something like that. Um, find the exact one I have. I think, yeah, this is what I have. I have a Samsung. This is what I have right here. I have this Samsung. Now, it's pretty expensive, but my God, it's great. Okay, I love it. I love it. And you can get some that are not that expensive. Take, for instance, down here. Now, if you're willing to wait for it to come, you can go to Alibaba at AliExpress and you can order it from China. You no, know, from overseas, and you get something like this right here. Y'all see that? Y'all see that right there? Something like this right here, and it's only two hundred seventy nine dollars. Now, there's another one hundred sixty four dollars on your shipping for your delivery, so it's going to run you about four hundred bucks, a little over four hundred bucks. Okay, when you can basically just go ahead and get something like this right here from from um, Brookpad and order that one. There's one from Brookpad for like two seventy four. That's stateside. Um, here's here's one for that, that's not a wraparound. There's one for seven ninety nine. Um, so th there are some some inexpensive ones. Another option that you can get, other than wraparound, you can get what's called this portable monitor for laptop. Now, this is actually pretty good. This is something new that has just come on the scene for the last couple of years. This is an extension that attaches to your existing laptop that gives you that panoramic 
um, feature. Let me pull this up for you, show y'all what this looks like. Some of y'all might want to opt uh, for this. If you already have a good laptop, this feature is only $259, okay? And basically, this is what it does. Um, as you can see here, you attach it to the size of your laptop, okay? It attaches to either, both sides of your laptop. And then what it does is you have an extension on this side, you have an extension on the other side, and it winds up you know, looking like that, okay? So you got your main laptop right here. Then you attach these two extensions, one on one side, one on the other side, and you plug into your little ports you know, on your laptop, and all of a sudden you got yourself a, you know, an extended wraparound screen. Now, what's great about this is you can take it with you, you can use it at home, you know, in your office or at home. Um, is you know, is something you can you know kind of just take all this with you, you know, if you choose to. It's, it's real nice, okay. So it gives you that effect of having you know that wraparound screen and. You can kind of you know use it just like you would do a regular wraparound screen. So that's a that's an addition that you can add to your laptop, and it is not expensive. Is is it, is it, it, is not expensive. Uh, this one costs four hundred and forty one dollars. There was another one on here that I looked at that was two hundred some just for the extension. Uh, but you see, but you, you can get those at pretty good prices. All right, get somebody else to let them in. All right, so what was I? All right, but eventually, this is what you want to go with, something like this. So, and if you're working your way up there, you start off with the laptop, then you get yourself an all-in-one, then you get yourself a panoramic screen one, and then you got your, you got your house, your apartment, you know, your office space, you got everything you need. You got a laptop, that's one terabyte, that's this speed. You got your all-in-one. Or your upstairs office or your bedroom office or something like that. And then you got your panoramic screen for your main office. You go really, 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 you know, get really, really good at this and you start making some good money. All right. So that's the equipment that you're going to need to dispatch freight. Now, some people ask, well, do I get a fax machine? No. No, 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 no. You can get a fax machine if you want to, but fax is kind of going by the way of, of the dollar store. All right. There is something. There's some things called some new tech, well, not new, it's been out for a while. There's technology now that is called DocuSign. All right. You can get what's called DocuSign now, which allows you to sign stuff and document, send documents and sign stuff right online. And if you got a touch screen like I got right here in my all in one, you can literally put your finger on it and sign. Documents and then send it. Right? You can sign up for DocuSign. I, I don't think it's very expensive. I think it's like what? What does DocuSign cost now? I mean, anybody know? What does DocuSign cost now? It's about, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what the uh, the cost is for DocuSign now, but I know it's not expensive. It's like either $19.99 a month, $29.99 a month, or $9.99 a month, or something like that. I'm not sure what it is. But, um, is not that expensive from what I from what I can remember. Uh, now you can also sign up with Rocket Lawyer. Okay. Rocket Lawyer is where I create all my documents. Okay. Rocket Lawyer allows me to send documents and sign them. Like this is one that's been signed by one of our um people that we just contract with to represent their brokers firm. Okay. So Rocket Lawyer allows you to you know create documents and you can send them and have them signed. Right off real, just like that, right there. You can also just upload documents onto Rocket Sign, onto Rocket Lawyer, and send them and have them sign, you know, online. Um, send them back to someone's email. You can text it to them on their phone or whatever the case may be. And it makes it very convenient to send and sign documents. Your, your rate cons and all that stuff. You don't need a fax machine. And the reason why you want to go with one of these electronic um, signature things that you can do online. Because most truckers don't have access to a fax machine, or they got to go to a truck stop that's going to fax machine. Well, if you're sending a dispatch agreement, you want them to sign it right away. You're not going to wait until they get to a truck stop and then remember to go in there and take the document and sign it, and then ask them to go ahead and fax that. Come on, no, no, no. 
do, do yourself a favor. Get yourself a doctor sign. Get yourself a rocket um, a rocket lawyer account. Rocket lawyer only costs thirty nine dollars a month, and you get so much other stuff other than being able to sign documents. Okay, so that's a very good way to go too. Another good way to go is um, eFax. Um, use eFax. You can go and use the eFax now. For those of you who don't know what eFax is, eFax is basically faxing online. Okay, eFax free. All right, um, eFax. There it is right there. Send and receive faxes online. This is a very inexpensive way of doing it, also too. They have a fourteen day free trial. After that, I think it's like. Oh, I'm not sure what the price. I think it's like twenty nine ninety nine or nineteen ninety nine or something like that. It, 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 it not, it's not that much. Let me click on that fourteen day trial and see if it's going to give me what the price is going to be after this. Um, uh, no, it's not telling me. <laughs> okay, let's go back over here to Google and see if Google can tell me what the eFax is going to cost me. Um, if I can get back over here, let's see here eFax. Ba, 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 ba. EFAX price. EFAX price. Let's check out EFAX price. Let's see what EFAX is costing people here nowadays. Unlimited family. There's other stuff too that's kind of like um, EFAX. You see these ads here for $10 a month. That's not um, EFAX, but that's another um, competitor. Go down here. How much does it cost to use eFacts? Right there. There it is. Buy what I thought it was. $19.95, $16.95 a month, something like that. Um, you can do eFacts Plus, cost $16.95 a month, and, and includes 150 pages of incoming faxes and 150 pages of outbound faxes. eFacts Pro costs $19.95 a month and includes 200 pages of incoming faxes and 200 outbound faxes. So it is affordable. It is affordable. And that's that's 200 pages for a month. I don't think you're gonna be sending that that many stuff through EFAX, you know, dispatching freight uh each month. So there you have um, but that's what you're gonna need. That that the, this is the, some of the type of equipment that you're gonna need to uh dispatch freight. Now, what other legalities do you have to have to dispatch freight? You're gonna need an EIN number, okay, um, to make Yourself leave. You need an EIN number. And that EIN number can be gotten at irs.gov. It is free. Never pay someone. Never, ever, 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 ever pay someone to get you an EIN number. You can just simply go to irs.gov. And it's free. Free. You go right there, and you simply gonna go and you're gonna look for EIN. Okay, you're gonna look for EIN. File your taxes, answer questions, sign in your account. We're in right there. Apply for employer ID number EIN. There it is, right there, right there it is, y'all. So you click on that. You go over here. You read this little thing right here. And then you click apply online. And you just follow the directions. And it takes about doesn't, doesn't even take five minutes. About three to four minutes. Okay, apply for an EIN. Make, make sure you read this stuff first, and then you can apply for EIN. Again, it takes about five, three to five minutes, and you're good to go. You got your EIN number. Now, what else do you need to get your EIN uh, to be legal? To be legal as a dispatcher. Now, after you file your EIN, before you pay, before before you pay your taxes on the money you've earned that year. You got to establish your legal entity within your state, which means you got to either do an LLC, an incorporation, or something that of that nature. You're gonna to have to what's called in court. Oh, I'm, I'm spelling it all wrong. You're gonna <laughs> you're gonna to have to incorporate. <laughs> okay, you're gonna to have to incorporate. Okay, all right. <clears throat> there are places that you can pay to incorporate your business. It usually runs about three, if you pay someone to do it, they're probably going to charge someone in the neighborhood of 375 to $475, okay? Um, if you pay someone else to do it, in, you do it, incorporation pricing, 
And it's going to depend on, it's going to depend on um, what state you're in is what it's going to cost you to do, you know, incorporation. Now, like here's some places that they can do it for $49. Then you incorporate online. It, it, it's not really that expensive, okay? But if you're going to have someone to do it, you might want to get a service that will incorporate you and act also as your um, 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 your um, authorized agent. Okay, authorized agent is the person who takes care of keeping all your paperwork and make sure your um, your filings for each year. Make sure your you know all the stuff is done to make to keep your company legal to keep your incorporation um, status active. Okay. If someone ever has questions about your incorporation, they're going to contact the authorized agent, okay? Usually, if you get with someone like Rocket Lawyer, like I have, I can do my incorporation with Rocket Lawyer. They act as my authorized agent for a total of about $390, $425. It takes care of the incorporation, and they act as my agent for the entire year that is that it is incorporated. And they'll take care of the refiling each year and stuff like that, and all that, all that good stuff. Okay, now you can do it yourself, but it's easier just to kind of you know get a service that will take care of that for you. All right, that's what it takes to be legal. That's it. That's your legality. That's everything it takes to be legal as a dispatcher and a dispatch freight. Now, the real question now is not whether uh, what keeps you legal. The real question is, what attributes do you need to possess in order to be um, a good dispatch? Okay, y'all give me a second here while I report some stuff and get this Yahoo off here. Um, but what does it take to be a good dispatch? Okay, all right. First of all, you got to be willing to commit to doing the same thing over and over and over, okay? You gotta be willing to commit to doing the same thing over and over and over again. Cause the process of dispatching is basically just a repetitive process after getting your carrier signed up. The hardest part about dispatching, and, 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 and let me be honest with you, is the sales part. That is actually getting a, getting a an owner operator to, um, to sign your dispatch agreement. Okay, that's the hardest part. Okay, that's it. That is the hardest part right there. Is getting an owner operator to sign your dispatch agreement. Everything after that is going to take care of itself. So once you got them signed up to a dispatch agreement, then the next morning or whatever the case may be, you got to find them some freight. And when you locate freight, it leads you right to the next step of doing what? Getting the what? The rate come. Once you find the freight that's carry one. When you hit the rate car, the rate car has directions in it, things that you need to do, right? And you send the carrier out with those directions. Then the carrier gets, when he drops the, picks up the load and drops the load, he does what? He gets you a what? A BOL. That's the receipt. So when he dropped the load, when you get the BOL, all you got to do is then send that back over to who? The broker. The broker then sends that up to the factory company. The next day, you create your invoice, right? The factory company pays the carrier and the broker, you invoice the carrier and the carrier pays you. Everything after getting the, seriously though, everything after getting the owner operator signed up is basically just what? It's just what? Procedural stuff. It's just going through the step. The same old steps you're going to repeat every time you dispatch freight. It really is that simple, people. It really is that simple, okay? So here's what you need. You need the ability to be able to follow direction. You need the ability to be able to do something that's repetitive. You need to have the patience to be able to consistently call on our operators every single day, at least 50 to 100 of them, and you need to pitch 50 on the operators per day in order to be able to sign up at least five of them, minimum of five, because if you do the pitch the way we train you to, if you pitch 50 on the operator, then you're probably going to, you're definitely going to sign up at least one out of that 50. 
If you get good at the pitch like I am, you probably sign up five to ten. Okay, if you do that five days a week, at the end of the week, you're on one on operator. That gives you five on operators that you dispatch for. You can dispatch them on average four loads a week. The average load is going to run about $1,250 on the load fee. You charge them 10%. That's going to give you about $125 a load, $150 a load, somewhere in that neighborhood. You get five of them. Um, you just better get four of them each for each on operator. By the end of the week, you got five of them. That's going to give you about $150 to $176,000 a week. No brainer. No brainer. But that stuff we'll go over in later training. As for tonight, that's all I got for y'all. Now let's go over some of the stuff we got here in um well, we got a lot of responses here on YouTube tonight. Let's see what we got in response here. Uh, uh, CGC, C of oh, GGC, a oh, greatness is, yeah, that's me. <laughs> now I feel comfortable as far as this legality concerning the dispatch. Yeah, dispatch is the legal. There's, there's no reason for you to feel like to feel uncomfortable about being a about being a legal business owner when you're dispatching. All right. Uh, hey, Mr. Calvin, what was your first business? Ooh. My very first business um, was years ago. Um, my very first business was actually before I became homeless. My very first business, I um, one that I started myself. I started um, who? What, did I, what was my very first business? It was flipping houses. To be honest with you, <laughs> yeah. Uh, flipping real estate. That was my very, 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 very first business. Um, I used to do it with mobile homes. Back in, oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, I was a mobile home salesperson with um, with um, Oakwood Homes. Y'all might not remember this. Oakwood Homes was a mobile home dealer back in the day. I was a mobile home salesperson. I went from being a mobile home salesperson to working as an underwriter in the underwriting department. We're doing, you know, making good money, about sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year. And then, but in being in the mobile home business, I knew a lot of people who had mobile homes um, who either, you know, couldn't make the payments on or couldn't couldn't afford the land that I was sitting on or whatever it may be. So there was a lot of <clears throat> mobile homes that had been abandoned, or a lot of mobile homes that people had had had, had weren't able to pay their property taxes on or not pay their lot rent or whatever case may be. So what I would do, I would go around and find these mobile homes that had property taxes still owed on them. They, you know, they hadn't paid the property taxes. They, they were either abandoned. They couldn't pay their lot fee. So I would catch up on the lot fees and then I'd have mobile home or I paid the property taxes and i have mobile home. But then i turn around and i you know, get them fixed up and now flip them out of self. <laughs> that was my very first business. Was, um, yeah, that was my very first business. Now, my first business out of the homeless shelter was I used to I used to order stuff from Alibaba. Those little handheld gaming systems you get for like seven dollars a pop. But Sony was selling them for like four fifty, five hundred dollars a pop. <laughs> Y'all remember those? I used to get them for like seven, nine dollars a pop from Alibaba. I would, I would order about, I would go to work at the labor hall, do bike breaking work all week, make about 450 bucks. Then I spend four hundred dollars of that and order me about twenty five to fifty of those little handheld gamers uh, things, and I was and I sold them on Craigslist. I put them on Craigslist and sold them for one hundred forty nine dollars a pop. I couldn't I couldn't keep I, I I couldn't keep them things. I couldn't get enough of them. Um, I remember I got to the point on my third flip. I I I I, I originally bought like fifteen of them. It was going like two days. And the only problem was it took me so it took me a while to get them because they were coming from China, places like that. So I ordered like 15 of them, and it took me about three weeks to get them. And when I finally got them, I sold them like two days, right? So it was like some real quick good money. Let me see if I can show, 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 give you an idea of what I'm talking about. I would get these things and I would you know, get them for like nine, ten dollars a pop. Okay. And and like I said, I had like four hundred fifty dollars you know, from, 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 from from working at, at the labor hall. Divide that by like nine dollars a pop, so I get like fifty of them, right? But then I turn around and sell them fifty at one forty nine, seven thousand dollars. Then I go in and I reinvest, take about those you know, six thousand dollars, you know that, and then I buy you know that divided by 
nine, and I get like 600 of them, right? So I got that right there. Then I turn around and I sell them for 149. Now that second flip, it took me a moment to sell them, but I remember on my second flip, I made about 11 grand on my second flip. It took me about, it took me three months to get them. Because remember, they got to come from China. And because I ordered so many of them, it took me a long time to get all of them. So it took me about three months to get them. And I was still living at the homeless shelter, by the way, y'all. It took me about three months to get them. And then when I got them, you know, I was selling them on, on Craigslist and having people meet me at, at the police department. Because they, they didn't want to get robbed, you know. <laughs> so I was having people meet me at the police department. And that's why I was selling it. So the police officer would stand there and watch while I sell them. This is that, you know, it was all legal and stuff. So they didn't want me to get robbed. I didn't want to get robbed. So, you know, that's what I did. So on that second flip, I mean, that right there, then I decided to go out and get me like a little uh, storage unit. They got me like a little storage unit, a little office space storage unit, like $270. I had me like a little storefront at the storage unit, what I did. And then I ordered a whole bunch of them after that. And then that's how I kind of, you know, made my money and got the homeless shelter and then never looked back really since then. So there you got it. <laughs> that was the first business out of the homeless shelter. All right. So there you have it. All right, y'all. We get ready to get out of here. <clears throat> I got about four minutes on my time. Got to get out here. Um, let's see some stuff here. Let's see what people are saying. We got a lot of comments on YouTube tonight. Uh, desktop, laptop, that buddy. Uh, yes, terabyte, one terabyte. Yes, especially for the things we will be doing. We let rent. Uh, we let rent um, um, for less. I like Goodwill. They're yeah, good with a good place to get some nice uh, laptop stuff from. Yes, yes, Walmart indeed. Uh, well, Apple has its own OS that's operating system. Um, uh, mine is an old Pavilion. I like 49 inch. Sorry. Right. There we go. Stuff talking about as we go through stuff, they were basically just uh, commenting on the stuff that I was saying. Look. Woo. All right. I hope y'all enjoyed our time together because I'm so glad we had this time together. Just to spend a little time talking about Frey. <laughs> All right. I know y'all don't like my singing, but I like it. You know, hey, I know I sound good. It's all good. Look, I do appreciate y'all joining me. Um, I've got a lot of work to do tonight. Um, we're kicking off our new um, uh, uh, consulting firm, Darren Stevens and I. And Darren to tell you, boy, we we busy now. We busy. Right, Darren? Are we busy or what? We busy. We got a lot of stuff to do. A lot of stuff to do. You know, we got to, got to work with these clients, uh, get them to uh, profitability. We're going to be looking for consultants. We're going to be hiring consultants. We're starting a massive recruitment campaign for the brokers firm. And what this is going to do for us now, now we have actually we have two under contract. We, we, after tonight, we will have two brokers firm under contract. And that's going to give us access to in-house freight. So those of you who are dispatching, instead of you getting all your loads from the load board, now you'll be able to get loads from us directly from the um, loads that we have from the shippers because we are partnered with a couple of brokers firms. And we're going to be partnering with more brokers firms through our consulting firm. So there you have it. And, and, and those broker firms are going to be hiring. And they're also going to allow you all, as part of our network, a national dispatch network, to work with the broker firm as independent contractors on getting them signed up for shippers. Um, I'll talk about the payment. I'll talk about the compensation plan, which is residual, which is great. If you, ugh, I'm telling you, you can do two hundred plus thousand dollars a year as an independent contractor with the broker firm that we're going to be doing, uh, that we're going to be uh, uh, working with to uh, get that broker firm up and manage them over the period of two to ten years. All right, that's going to do it. I thank you all. I thank you all. I thank you all. Y'all have a great evening. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Uh, my countdown, my clock is ticking. Uh, I got to be off here by eight o'clock. And so I, I got some other stuff I got to do. Got some other appointments and stuff I got to take care of. The things I got to do tonight. I'm very, very busy now. So look, I thank you all. I appreciate y'all. I love each and every day. It's one of you all. I look to see you all back here next Thursday for our dispatch training, how to dispatch CMU, which is going to be locating carriers, how to locate carriers, where to find carriers, how to locate carriers, how to get them to sign through the dispatch group. Look, y'all have a great one. I'll see you all on Saturday for Broken's Hour, 10, 15 a.m. on Saturday. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night.